Okay, let's talk about some of the history of Tarpon Springs. And and this video has been a long time coming. I live in Tarpon Springs. And let, we'll get into some of the reasons why I haven't made this video in two years. Here we go. Sam and thanks for coming by the Living in Tampa channel where we make videos about what it's like to live and move to the whole Tampa area. Today we're talking about Tarpon Springs. Also, we are a team of realtors and we want to hear from you. So give us a call, send us a text, send us an email, and, and give us a chance to just hop on a Zoom call and, and see if we're the right fit for you, because I'm, I'm pretty sure we are. So why haven't I made this video about Tarpon Springs yet? So my in-laws live here, like born and raised here. My father-in-law born and raised here. My wife grew up here in Tarpon Springs. And it's just kind of hard to talk about when it's that close to family. So, and because I live in this area and my in-laws live in this area, my opinions about Tarpon Springs are a little complex, right? But let's go, just go through some history of Tarpon Springs. This is a pretty interesting area and one of the oldest towns in Florida. So Tarpon Springs was founded in 1887, the same year that Tampa was founded. But some things happened before that. So in the 1870s, it was settled by like farmers and fishermen. There's tons of water here. There's tons of like brackish water, estuary kind of places where, you know, fish life comes from. And then in 1882, Hamilton Distant, which there's a Distant Avenue here in Tarpon Springs, bought a big section of land and just kind of declared, I'm gonna make this into a town. And then by 1880, the first sponging happened in the area. And they were, they were hooking sponges actually with a fishing line. The hook on there, they drag it along the bottom and hook these sponges and bring them up. And yes, the sponges are alive when they're down there. So this industry was moving along, was growing. And then in 1887, the city of Tarpon Springs was founded. And as part of distance plan for the city by 1888, this big railroad came through the area. This was called the Orange Belt Railway. Big north-south, and at the time, I mean, it was going through what is now Pinellas County, but at the time, this was all Hillsborough County. And this railroad caused this area to boom as a winter spot for Northeasterners, wealthy people that could take the train down and really camp out here in the winter. So this area was growing, and then in the early 1900s, 1905, a new guy introduced a new way of catching sponges, actually diving for them, instead of dragging this like hook line along the bottom. And this diving technique is still used today. It's the mascot of the local schools, the spongers, which has been criticized on like late night TV, that kind of thing, as one of the worst mascots in the US. Um, but this technique allowed a diver to get a lot more sponges at one time. This man that introduced this technique is from Greece, and he quickly started to recruit other Greeks to come work in the sponging industry, to come work for him. And a lot of these Greeks came from a collection of islands, the Dodecanese Islands, and, and very quickly, one of those islands there, Kalimnos, the, the Kalimnians in Tarpon quickly outnumbered all the other people, all the other Greeks, and this like island sponging fishing culture kind of fueled the Greek culture of this area in Tarpon Springs. And heading into that Florida bloom, that early 1920s, when this Tampa area in Florida was really kind of blossoming, the sponging industry became a multi-million dollar industry and then crashed during the Great Depression, just like a lot of industries. But it, it, was still, it was still alive, the sponges. The sponges were there, they were still alive until 1947 when a huge algae bloom, red tide, killed a lot of the sponges in the Gulf of Mexico. And whenever a lot of these sponges died off, a lot of these sponges switched to shrimping. They hadn't caught a lot of shrimp in this area previously because the sponges were more expensive. I don't know why they didn't, but a lot of these crews and boats and, and men switched to shrimping. Overall, the sponging industry is much smaller now than it used to be. You know, there are synthetic sponges made out of all kinds of things now. But these natural sponges, is, it's a much smaller industry and it's a lot more sustainable. It's not harvesting so much of the sponges out of the Gulf. But then this other thing happened. In the 80s, there was a big algae bloom in the Mediterranean where also a lot of sponges came from. And it killed most of the sponges in the Mediterranean and really crippled the industry there. So quickly, right after that, Tarpon Springs became the sponge capital of the world. And now you see the relic of that, the sponge docks, where they're still bringing in sponges every single day. Still a, still a working 
industry area where you know people are making their livelihood, people are out there sponging, bringing these in, selling them, and, and all kinds of things like that. And tarpon does have some really unique beauty to it. it. It has a lot of water, 25 to 30 miles of waterfront. It's been called the Venice of the South. You see from the air these three primary bayous that come into town, Spring Bayou, Whitcomb Bayou and Kramer Bayou, they create a really unique experience for this town. And then you also have the Inclote River along the north side of town, bringing fresh water to the area. Also Spring Bayou has a big spring in it that is fed similarly to Lake Tarpon on the other side of town, which is a 2000 acre plus giant lake over there. So there's water all around. And this town, Tarpon Springs, is still very Greek and very proud of it. There's a big Greek Orthodox church. If you missed this previous video about the Epiphany celebration, this this town really shows up for this kind of thing. And it's really important to most of the citizens here. After being here for two years, I can I can tell you that Tarpon Springs is very, very Greek and very, very proud of it. And, and it's, it's Greek in a very authentic way. Yeah, the sponge docks might seem kitschy, they might seem touristy, but the people that are down there in these bakeries, like National Bakery is my favorite down there, cash only bakery. And next door is this like strange like gambling hall where these old Greek guys are in there like smoking and playing dominoes or something. I don't really know what's going on, but the, none of them speak English. So it's very authentic and it's very charming in a lot of those ways. Coming up, we're gonna talk some more about Tarpon Springs. So we've got a couple of beaches here. I wanna compare these beaches to all the other beaches. We've got a bunch of breweries here in Tarpon Springs. And there's a lot of things to do in this town and, or even if you're just in Tampa, coming to Tarpon for a day is, is really worth the trip. And, and like I said, we wanna hear from you. So give us a call, send us a text, send us an email. Let's set up a Zoom call. Let's see how we can help you make the move or make the purchase or sale in the Tampa area, we, we wanna help you. So reach out and thanks for coming by.